All right, for this video, what we're going to be covering is our 7.2 sectional drawings worksheet. Um, I would like to focus primarily on the drill block, which is going to be our first uh, official inventor assignment to kick off the semester. So um, what you'll need to do is open up this sectional views worksheet. Um, there are two different assignments on this worksheet, but the first one that we're going to be focusing on, this is page one, but the first one we're going to be focusing on is on page two, and it's called the drill block. Here I will have the tutorial video that you're watching uh, linked. Um, if you Google this, you will also find on YouTube plenty of other tutorial videos from other teachers who also teach IED that they use for their students. Um, everybody's is a little bit different in the way they kind of model it. Uh, so there is more than one way to go ahead and do this, but I'm going to go ahead and show you one way and then um, show you a couple of different things while we're adding dimensions to our working drawing um, of how to adjust your tolerances and add symbols and stuff like that. <clears throat> So the first thing that we need to actually do is create a fully generated um, 3D model of our part. So in Inventor, I do have both um, the IDW. This is going to be what we're going to be turning in that's fully dimensioned. We're going to learn how to do section views this week. Um, but before we can get to your drawing, we actually do need to create the 3D model of the drill block. All right, and there is going to be four holes. We're going to go ahead and show you how to do those holes today. Um, and then I'll get into how to create your IDW. So we do need um, this document here. I have mine printed out. Um, so that's what I'm going to be referencing just so I don't have to keep toggling through uh, both of the uh, screens here. So if you have a printer, I would definitely suggest um, printing it out or use dual monitors or pull it up on your phone or something. So we're going to be using the front view and the right side view. So you do have to scroll down the right side view. The depth is just going to be three inches. So I'm primarily going to be using these dimensions here in order to model my part. So let's go ahead and get started. What I'm going to do first is go to file new and I'm going to open up a standard.ipt and in our instructions, it asks us to save both the IPT and the IDW file as 7.2 drill block. So the first thing I want to do is come to File, Save As, and you're going to notice I am saving it in a Holes and Circles folder. So what I've done in my Google Drive, um, semester one, I just saved everything in the Unit 1 folder that I had created. For semester two, I'm going to strongly recommend that you create a unit two folder. And by doing that, um, if you come up to the top here and click on this folder with a little asterisk, or you can come into your Google Drive here and come to new and then um, a new folder. All right. And then you would just add um, any of those documents that you may need within that. All right, so I've created that unit two folder and then within the unit two folder, I've also created a holes and circles folder. So then I just came back up here, created another one and named it. So I'm gonna name um, the holes and circles folder. I'm gonna kind of break down each of the sections that we're gonna be talking about just to better organize myself. And our instructions ask us to title this 7.2 uh, drill block. And I have a force of habit of naming everything in all caps. Um, it's typical in the engineering world. So uh, if you're wondering why everything is in all caps, that is why. And then I'm going to go ahead and save it. Um, I'm going to press cancel for this because I already have it done, but you would save. All right. So first things first, uh, we know that we're going to be working with our front view. So I'm going to go ahead and select the XY plane. And I'm going to grab the rectangle tool. I'm going to start at my origin. My width of my um, part is going to be five. Then I'm going to press tab and it's going to tab over so I can type in my height. I'm going to press enter and then zoom out. Remember, if you can't zoom out, you're going to press that front face on your view cube and that'll go ahead and fit everything nicely into our screen. 
The next thing that I'd like to do is create my line. Um, and I'm just going to pull up this document here. What I want to do is I want to create a line straight through um, the middle of my rectangle here. So I know it's straight through the middle because half of two is one. Um, so I'm going to use my midpoints and I'm going to create a construction line straight through the center of this thing. So it doesn't impact my final design. So with the line command active, you're going to come over to the format panel and you're gonna click on this little symbol here, which is your construction line. Now, this is something new that some of you may not have used yet. Um, so I do, do wanna go ahead and show you how to use this. So if you click on your construction line, and then I'm looking for this green little circle here, this represents the midpoint. I'm gonna come all the way across and select the right side's midpoint as well. And then you're gonna notice that your construction line is actually a dotted line. It kinda looks like a hidden line. I'm going to turn off my construction line. Um, it's no longer highlighted blue, all right? And I'm going to escape out of my line command. And now what I want to do is create four points to create the center points of my circles. So what I can go ahead and do is, toggling back here, is I can use my X and Y axis codes that'll pop up um, in my inventor environment and I can use simple math and um, identify where I want each of those points to be using the X and Y coordinates, or you can go in and you can specifically dimension them. Again, there is no right or wrong way. Uh, to work a little bit more efficiently, so I'm starting off here, you're gonna notice as I move over to the right, my X coordinate is increasing. So if I place my first X coordinate at 0.75 inches, that's where my first center point of my circle is supposed to be. To make this a little bit easier for you, down at the bottom, um, if you click on this little button here, it's called Snap to Grid. It'll kind of lock you in um, to those uh, dimensions a little bit easier. So I'm going to put my first one at uh, 0.75. Then if I keep moving over, my next one is one inch away. So if I do 0.75 plus one inch, my next point is going to be at 1.75. You're going to notice I'm a little bit off of um, my line here. All right. So you want to make sure that you're right on that line <clears throat> while creating your points. Otherwise, it's going to throw some things off. Again, you can go back and later dimension it but it's just easier to do it right the first time. All right. And then my second one is 1.25 away from this one. So now I am at three inches. Again, I'm just adding all my dimensions up. And the last one is 1.25 away from that. So now I'm at 4.25. I'm going to place my last one. All right, I'm going to escape out of that command. I'm going to finish my sketch. Now I have an idea of where each one of those points for my circles are going to go ahead and be. And these points are going to help us make our holes a little bit easier. All right, the next thing that we'll need to do is extrude our feature. Now, since this is supposed to be the front view where we just created those holes, we still want to go ahead and see, um, I'm sorry, where we created the points. We still want to go ahead and see those points. So my distance, the depth of my object is going to be three, but I want to change the direction so that the extrusion goes back so I'm able to see these points that we just created. I'm going to go ahead and select OK. And then notice the points disappeared. It's OK. They're still there. We just can't see them. So if we come over to our model bar here and we open up our extrusion to find sketch one, we can right click on sketch one and we can turn on the visibility of those points. Now we can still see the construction line and they're really hard to see, but our points are still there. They're just that lime green color. All right, so the next thing that we need to go ahead and do is we need to create our four individual uh, holes. Right now, if I go to hole, it's going to select all of the points that we just created, which is problematic because all of our holes are different. 
So you'll want to cancel out of that. All right, I was just showing you that if you select that, it is going to pick up on all of those points that we just created, and it's going to apply the same settings or the same um, characteristics to each one of our holes, which is not what we want. To avoid doing that, if you come and select your first hole on the far left-hand side, and then select hole um, in the commands modify panel, now it's only activating and previewing that first hole that you selected the point for. All right, and so this will allow us to modify our holes um, individually. So the first hole we have is a counter bore, and we know that because of this symbol right here. All right, so this symbol, um, according to your PowerPoint, is going to be our counter bore symbol. So we need to make sure that we select the correct type of hole when we're um, creating our holes in Inventor. So this is our counter bore. Um, if you hover over the symbols, it will tell you what kind of hole each one of these four are. So I'm gonna select that counter bore setting first. I'm gonna walk through these first um, couple of dimensions um, since it is the first time that we're going through them just so everything hopefully makes a little bit more sense. So since we have a counter bore, I'm actually gonna do the counter bore settings first. So we have a diameter of 0.75, and then that counter bore diameter goes down only half an inch. So I'm gonna come back to Inventor. Here's our counter bore symbols here. So we have a diameter of 0.75, Right, and as I change my settings, it's going to give me a nice preview. And the counter bore drops down or has a depth of 0.5. Right, the next two numbers on our um, hole dimension here, the rest of the hole has a diameter of 0.5 and it drops down or has a depth of 2. All right, so I'm going to come back here. My diameter is going to be 0.5, and my depth of that 0.5 diameter, half inch diameter, is going to be 2. All right. This hole does not go all the way through. So um, sometimes when we have holes that go all the way through our object, like some of our holes that we're going to be doing today, we'll select the termination to be all the way through. But since it's not going through the entire part here, we're going to select distance, right? And that allows us to identify this two inch depth distance. We're going to go ahead and select OK when you're done, and it's going to go ahead and apply that hole for you. The second hole that we need to create, we need to make sure that we select that point first. And then we're going to select the hold command again. And this second hole is actually a counter sink hole. And your counter sink option is going to be this fourth option here at the bottom. And again, we want to start with that counter sink um, information. So my counter sink, it tells me, is a diameter of one. And my threading is going to be at 82 degrees. And then my diameter of the hole is going to be 0.5, and it says through. So for this, that tells us that that hole is going through the entire object. So we're going to set our termination to through all, and that is going to give us a preview that that hole continues through the entire depth of that object. You're going to notice that that depth goes away now because our hole goes all the way through. We'll select OK. We'll select our third point. Select the hole command again. And this time we're going to have a drilled hole. right? And that drilled hole has a diameter of 0.5. It also has a tolerance attached to it. And that's what that plus and minus sign right on top of each other go ahead and represent. Um, it has a tolerance of 0 0.002 inches and we're not going to identify this information now. We're actually going to do it on our drawing uh, when we get to annotating it. Uh, this hole is also through so we're going to set our termination to through all again and we're going to go ahead and select OK. We'll select our fourth and final hole 
point for the fourth and final hole. And this hole is also going to be a counter bore hole, which means we're going to go ahead and do our counter bore settings here first. The diameter it says is three or point three seven five. And the depth of this counter bore is going to be 0.25. And this time our hole does not go all the way through. So we need to change our termination to distance. And this remaining hole diameter, so the rest of this uh, hole, is going to be 0.25 inches with a depth of 1. And then we're going to go ahead and select OK, and there is our part. Now, if you want to get rid of the visibility of your points and the construction line going all the way through that sketch, that is totally fine. You just would turn off that visibility. And then lastly, of course, make sure that you save. All right, so you're going to save it as the 7.2 drill block. Again, it's going to be a part file, so it's going to have that file extension of an IPT. I'm going to save it. I'm going to replace mine because obviously we've already saved and we'll be good to go.